I now want to take a look at creating uh, groups using Azure Active Directory. Okay, now just be advised that um, you will need uh, to, to utilize some of the functionality in groups. You will need to make sure your Azure Active Directory Premium 2 license is uh, activated. And I've shown you how to do that in a previous video. Just make sure that you've, uh, you've done that. And remember that it can take up to uh, from 15 minutes up to an hour for that to actually take effect. But either way, you should be able to, if you're trying to follow along, you should be able to do the majority of the stuff here uh, that I'm doing even without that license. All right. Um, so here we are, portal.azure.com. We're going to go to the menu button. We're going to go to Azure Active Directory blade here. And then from there, uh, we're going to click the groups blade. And this is where we can create groups. Now, again, you might notice that I've got a bunch of different groups here. You will not have all those right now. Just don't stress over that because you you create your own groups. These are some groups that I had from a, a previous course that I, I uh, built. Okay, But don't worry that you don't have all those groups. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and click to create a new group. All right. And from there, we have group type. Now, there are two kinds of groups that Azure AD will natively support. You have what is called a security group, and you have what is called a Microsoft 365 group. Okay. Um, now, I'll start. Let me just start by explaining what a Microsoft 365 group is, just because that's, that's a very common one that's used in your business services, especially, of course, if you are using... Uh, Microsoft 365. So if your company is using Microsoft 365 licenses, so you've got maybe Office and you're using Teams and you got all these different uh, application services and stuff that you're using. And of course, this we're not really looking at all that stuff right now in this video, but if your company is using that, uh, those types of services, this is the preferred group because when you create a Microsoft 365 group, um, you have the ability to essentially assign users to that group and those users will essentially be tied together in a certain way for example in that group um, it will automatically create it can automatically create a team for microsoft teams so the users that are in that group will automatically be associated with microsoft teams uh, they will uh, they automatically can have a sharepoint site set up for sharing information through sharepoint um, Microsoft Planner, there's a thing called social media platform called Yammer they're all associated with. They get an email a address associated with that group. So if you email the group, the email will go to everybody in the group. Um, you can also give the group permissions to resources and things like OneDrive and, and all of that. All right. Uh, now, there is one major thing that this group cannot do, and that is it cannot contain... Um, devices it can only contain users and that is something that I would recommend you remember Microsoft 365 groups cannot contain devices so you can't put uh, laptop desktop computers in this group you can't put smartphones tablets anything like that in this group it can only contain uh, user accounts all right and if you're just talking about pure Azure services and you're not using you doing a lot with Microsoft 365 um, you generally would want to go for the other group, all right, the security group, all right. So the majority of the stuff you know we'll do here and play around with uh, is going to involve using a security group if we're just doing pure Azure related services and we're not dealing with the Microsoft 365 licenses a whole lot. In other words, we're not playing with Teams, we're not doing Exchange or, or any of that stuff. Okay, um, so a security group, security groups are built specifically for giving rights out to things. So for example, if you're going to be setting up virtual machines and giving uh, certain people, uh, individuals access to the virtual machines to play around with it or, or other resources in Azure and you're giving permissions out for that, this is the more the more common group because it's not really related to you know dealing with Microsoft Office and, and all that fun stuff. And, and very critical, if you are going to be associating devices to this group, you have to use a security group for that. So let's create a security group. I'm going to call this security group developers. All right. Maybe we've got a, a group of users that are developers. Maybe they're developing uh, applications for our Azure environment. And so we're going to have this group called developers. You can specify a description. Right here, you can also associate Azure AD roles to this group. Roles are going to give certain permissions out. I'm not really going over roles right now, so I'm not going to select anything there. And then you can do membership type, either assign dynamic user, dynamic device. Okay, so this is where it's important if you don't have the uh, Azure AD premium subscription set up, 
you will not have the dynamic user dynamic device okay but let me explain what all this is so an assigned group is a group type that you have to um, either add or remove people to and from that group okay so this will involve um, me as an admin adding people to the group manually or removing people out of the group manually or alternatively we can also um, have what's called a group owner and if we assign a group owner then that group owner can add people to the group or remove people out of the group okay so generally speaking it's a very static group uh, people get added or removed manually by somebody either an admin or by a group owner okay now that is the the generally just how a normal groups if you got a free azure ad subscription you'll always have that option but with the premium you get the ability to use dynamic user or dynamic device and notice by the way that if i go to microsoft 365 group i do have the ability to do a dynamic user group but not a dynamic device group because remember we cannot associate devices with a microsoft 365 group only security groups right so from there um, I could go, let's do a dynamic user group. Now, I will also say that you can still assign um, an owner to this. An owner can configure certain settings for the group, but with dynamic groups, no person will ever be manually adding people to the group or removing people out of the group. Dynamic groups are really interesting. They use these things called dynamic queries. And the only way something is part of the group is by this thing called a dynamic query okay so for example if I go over here and click add dynamic query all right from there I've got these different expressions these expressions are like uh, conditions that have to be met and based on those conditions the uh, the device or the user in this case it's a user because I did a, a, a user group uh, um, dynamic rule here um, based on that expression the device or the user in this case will be part of that group okay so I'm gonna go here to property I'm gonna click so I have all these properties that it can look at in regards to a user okay so we'll do department and operator will say contains so that's like their department property contains the word will say developer okay and by the way this is not case sensitive all right um, so it doesn't matter if I put a capital D or a lowercase d now watch this, I can also say, um, we'll say add in a, another expression, we'll say and or or, we'll say or, and we'll say um, job title. So if their department property has the word develop in it, contains the word developer, or maybe the job title contains the word developer, either one of those will automatically make this person part of the group, okay? So at that point, we'll click save, and we've created ourselves a little dynamic rule here and we can click to create and we've now got ourselves a dynamic group okay on the flip side of that if you want to create an assigned group too just to play around with that we'll create an assigned group called help desk all right and we'll do an assigned group and we won't worry about having owners or any of that we'll just click create and so if we come down here to um let me, oh, sometimes it takes a moment to show up and you have to refresh the screen but um let's uh do that again hopefully it's here no we're still waiting on it let's look at developers first since we're waiting on that to appear we'll go to developers uh and then from there we can we'll look at members and you'll notice that add members is grayed out okay so people will be a member based on um the information in their their uh, property of that user so if i wanted a user really to be a member of this group i'd have to go and edit um, based on these dynamic membership rules right and those are our dynamic membership rules so if I went back over here to uh, let's go home let's go to the menu button go to Azure Active Directory users and let's choose um, a user let's do uh, Larry Thomas here um, and we'll go to edit properties all right and uh, if we scroll down he's part of marketing let's just change that to developer okay and we'll hit save so we'll say that I put that he's a marketing manager but we're just gonna we're just gonna change that all right just to so you can see that how this will work we'll say uh, for job title he is a lead developer 
All right, now either one of these, you don't have, you didn't have to do both because remember we used an or statement on that, um, that those conditions we were setting, but either one of those would would automatically make him be part of this uh, group, right? But the one thing I also want to point out with Azure is you got to be patient with Azure. Things do not take effect immediately. Sometimes when you make changes like this, it can take about 15 minutes before it actually appears. So if you click groups right now, you'll well, it actually happened really quick. This case, it did happen very quickly. But just so you know, sometimes it can take up to 15 minutes for something like that to happen. Um, and you're going to hear that a lot when working with Azure. Some things can be instant. Some things can be five minutes. Some can be 10, 15. Some can be an hour. And there are even some things that can take 24 hours before they take effect. So that's one of the things you got to consider whenever you're working uh, with Azure Active Directory or Azure in general, I should say. So let's go back over to Groups. So if we go over here to Developers, we can click Members, and we can see Larry Thomas is part of that group. All right, but notice we can't add or remove people from the group. Okay, now if we go back over to here and we look at Help Desk, which has finally appeared, you'll notice I can, if I go to Members, I can manually add people to the group if I want. So, um, because this is an assigned group. All right. So hopefully that gives you a, a decent understanding now of working groups. Obviously, you can create groups through PowerShell and the Azure CLI, which is the, the Linux-type shell that Azure has, but I'm not getting any of that right now. I just wanted to show you how we could do this using the graphical tools. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <laughs>